Hello, Tom Sports Editor Chris Corman, joined by Dustin Opirak and our excellent Hoosier Scoop sign. Uh, yeah. This is personally crafted by Stu Moon. One Stuart Moon. It is. These are each. He wrote each of these with a marker. Incredible. Incredible work. That's a lot of genius right there. Dustin, I am going to need you to not be yourself tonight. I need you to be direct and quick because we have spent two days gathering information on IU football. We must deliver it all to these people. We will have no rambling. I might as well walk away now and just let <laughs> you talk. Well, tell me uh, the key takeaway from Media Day on the IU side. Uh, I mean, it's a lot of stuff I guess we've heard before, uh, to be honest. I guess there's there's actually more confidence, I guess, in certain parts. He's going to do, do this, isn't he? He's standing back there. Yeah, he's standing back here. He's, he's holding it, by the way. Stu is holding okay. it up. He's that proud of his creation. Go. Uh, but I think um, if, if there's an interesting part of it, it's that this team at least claims to be more confident in, in its defense than well, most of us would expect, considering they're uh, getting rid of, you know, they're, they're losing eight starters from a defense that wasn't obviously very good. <laughs> Uh, to begin with, either it was a ninth or was a tenth in total defense in the Big Ten last year. Not tenth. Was a tenth. Yes. Okay. Michigan was the only team that was worse. It was pretty rough. Uh, so, but Lynch comes into it and says he thinks that the defense is a lot better than people give it credit for because he thinks there's better depth. There's obviously not a player like uh, a Jamie Curlew or even a Greg Middleton or even a you know Ray Fisher in, in the secondary. But what he thinks he has is more depth, he, especially even in the secondary, which was a major problem last year. And it's been a major problem for years. It's a major years. problem for years and years. And they've, they had, they've had two over. corners who could play, and then mm. right, you know, and two safeties yeah. who were okay. Mm. They always had injuries, and it just right. from there. And they've obviously, I mean, they've they've had to make some moves to get people over there that could, you know, at least instantly try to contribute. When we got two JUCO kids and moved Mitchell Evans and Matt Ernest uh, from wide receiver over there. Yeah. Uh, but the situation that creates, Bill says, is that while all of a sudden we have depth, we have real competition at every spot in the secondary. You know, he's obviously there's a lot of spots that are like on the team that are pretty much settled right now. He says, but the secondary is completely wide open. Uh, you're going to have probably, you know, maybe 10 guys right. grand total battling for, for time over there. Yeah. So The most interesting like thing I, I heard on the defense was uh, that a lot of what they are, are pinning their hopes to is that, that – there's a new attitude, which they also mm -hmm. talked about last year. I, I should bring up, and and of course they that's, always talk that's about what this whole thing is about is all about. It's all about hope, and mm -hmm. uh, but the attitude, uh, Bill Bill attributed to two people. One is Kevin Bush, who you wrote yeah. uh, one of the better profiles to appear Why in this you. newspaper in a long time about uh, earlier this year. He is the uh, Iraq vet, um, yeah. 25, 26 years old, and Bill mm -hmm. basically said this guy, you know. How could you not follow his leadership? Yeah. How could you not mm. respect him and, and uh, mm. not have some of these same college kid doubts or mm. college kid thoughts? So this is too hard. Right. It's been a bad day. Uh, mm. How could you ever have any of those things? And mm. how could you not want to go out and run through a wall when this guy's yeah. already done mm. uh, XXX? You know, right. he's done all these things for uh, for his country, and, and these mm. kids really respect that. And then Jeff Thomas, the other kid. Uh, yeah. From big middle linebacker, the, the Juco, the Juco kid. He said he's just sort of a. Uh, I think what, what I think Bill used the the term, you know, the he has wild hair or something. You know, they're a wild hair group. <laughs> so, uh, and <laughs> I think I book. think what he's meaning is that they're uh, they're not quite as polite maybe as uh, yeah. some defenses um, the, mm. that he has had. They're guys yeah. who, who are really going to get after it. Um, mm -hmm. and, and so I'm interested to see how that plays out in in yeah. camp for the parts that I'm here for. Yeah, um, no, I it's. It will be interesting, interesting to see in that way. Um, it was it was funny listening to him talk about Kevin Bush, especially at the uh, you know uh, alumni event that we went to on Monday night. Yeah. He basically said we should that give he's, a shout out. To, we should give a shout out to Ed at Joe's bar. Yeah, Ed at Joe's bar. It's a great bar. Should, it I is. Would, I would drink there bar. if I lived in Chicago. I would too. Um, I'm also advertising for Five Guys apparently. Yeah, you're you're really a show, man. Free burger. You're really a show. You're really looking for like free burger sponsorship. For all of us. Moving on. Um, but Bill basically said that he's Especially scared. Especially the sign guy, he's got to be yeah. hungry. But Bill basically said that he's more or less scared of Kevin Bush. That was, Kevin yeah. walked in and said, I want to play, and he's like, I, I'm, I wasn't going to tell him no. He's, it wasn't, he's huge and he's tattooed up, and I'm not sure what he's going to do to me. Yeah. So. It was interesting, though, Kevin mm. Bush has not played a down of real football since he was 18. No. And, they, and they, are very, they are very open about, you know, we think he can play, but we yeah. need to see. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going we're gonna to wait and Yeah, and no, see. I mean, I mean, watched him a good bit in the spring, obviously, and... and uh, you know he he performed pretty well. I mean, you know, compared to most other defensive ends, those he's not a huge guy. I mean, compared to us, he's massive and you know would 
right. obviously throw normal people but around, that, but he's not a massive individual, yeah, that, and that was why he didn't get recruited. That brings us to another. Dude. That brings us to another part of what they're talking about with mm-hmm. the defense being better is that yeah. they've now gone to this stand up. Uh, you know, it's still Bill explained it to some people. It's it's still four three personnel. Right. But one mostly. of the down linemen will not be a down lineman. He, he will, will stand, stand up. up. Yeah. Uh, they will try to play three defensive tackles. They'll probably mm-hmm. use Adam Replogle on one of the ends. He'll be yeah. he'll he'll be he'll have his nose It'll nose be. to the ground because he's mm-hmm. pretty tough. But he has the ability to be outside. Yeah. Uh, and that gives IU in Bill's mind a chance to be a little bit more diverse on defense. Uh, right. Uh, throw different things at, mm-hmm. at offenses. Um, Tyler Replogle told me he he would probably end up blitzing more. There'd be more stunning. Right. A little bit more of that. Uh, and they have some other guys who are these hybrid ends. Right, Darius um, Johnson, right. Um, Eric. This was Eric or Terrence Thomas. Which Thomas is? There, there's the two Thomas. Oh, Fred one, too. Well, Fred Jones. He's huge. Yeah, Fred, Fred, Jones. Fred Jones is massive. Basically, Fred Jones is what they kind of look at as their typical right. uh, prototype anchor uh, yeah. defensive end. Well, he's definitely going to have his hand in the ground. Um, but Darius Johnson, Kevin Bush, and uh, the smaller of the two Thomases, I think Terrence is the. Is the smaller one are going to be the guys that are going to be stand up guys coming around that end? Right. Um, so that's kind of how, how they're going to be used. And, and yes, moving some tackles. Uh, Deontay Mack is another guy that would play like an anchor defensive right, end battle with mm-hmm. with with Replogal and, and those type of guys will be kind of moved outside. But it does allow them, like you said, to be a lot more diverse with that. And you know, really, like Bill kind of said, there's sort of this there's sort of this divide between their defensive ends. They have a bunch of big dudes and they have a bunch of smaller linebacker hybrid types. Right. And they're trying to take advantage of. Of uh, that, that yeah. personnel. Oh, always a little skeptical when football coaches starting using using words like, "Oh, he's our hybrid guy." You know, we really right. changed this. Uh, but we'll wait and see. You know, yeah, I think it's worth mm. worth giving a chance. He he compared mm. the defense to Ohio State, uh, which obviously has done some really good things, but obviously right. has to what they use, not to what they right, are. Right, personnel you know? that uh, really yeah. fits. You know, could fit. Anybody, Anybody. But they're really, really good. Uh, offensively, not many doubts expressed. I mean, most mm-hmm. people, I think, know, realize. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, there is even some sentiment, I think, uh, certainly among the IU people, that the, mm-hmm. that the wide receiving core is as good as any in the in the conference and country. Uh, right. And I think that that is probably not a, a boast. I mean, that, mm-hmm. that is country be, might be a bit high, yeah, but well, conference, sure, I think, but is, conference. It's, it's definite. I think you. Uh, as we've talked about many times, that's the one unit that you look at and say that's a Big Ten receiving core. There's no sure. question about it. You 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 wouldn't uh, looking at them athletically. You wouldn't say okay they don't belong. They couldn't play at Penn State or they couldn't right. play at you know any place else. Especially now with Deweese Wilson. Yeah, exactly. Well, apparently now they one go of the four deep of six four of, of guys that are about six two to six right. five. And Deweese is one of the fastest play. guys on the team. Mm-hmm. Him and yeah. Nick Turner yeah. can really yeah. jump. Yeah, uh, can oh, really absolutely. really jump and has mm-hmm. has good hands. Uh, right. Yeah, so that that unit. He's very and, much in the Belcher Turner mold, right. basically. And Doss is sort of his own player. He's a little bit smaller, but Doss has mutant hands. It's unbelievable. It doesn't, and, you know. I've yeah, there are plays that are disgusting. And then and then Chapel, everyone sort of mm-hmm. has confidence in him. I mean, there yeah. are, there are very few doubts. Uh, there was not much buzz There's about no, Ben Chapel, yeah. but there are no doubts about Ben Chapel. No, he will deliver the not. ball. He will make the smart play. Absolutely not. Uh, mm-hmm. he, you know, he knows mm-hmm. how to get he the can team make into every, what it needs to do. The <clears throat> I think I kept hearing it is. He can make every throw. Five I'm guys good. water? I'm good. Okay. Uh, you know, he can throw the deep out route. He can throw the deep, you know, deep all over the middle. He can hit every pass. And he, and Bill also said that he's really taking over the team at this point. Sure. Uh, that he's, you know, really kind of transferred over. He's, he was a pretty good leader last year, but it seems like this year he realizes it's very much his team. Okay. Uh, the issue offensively, if we could make this quick, obviously, is... The issue is, yeah, you're rambling. The offensive line. Oh, I mean, sure. they still got it. I mean, you know, they're obviously replacing a, you know, the first pick in the second round of the NFL draft in Roger Saffold. They, they need to find either McDonald or Hager to take that over. And, uh, you know, there are some issues, I think, at, at right guard. Cody, Fal- Cody Faulkner has been injured for a very long time. There's some yeah. guys that could play there, but that's still going to be an issue. Young He's guys. confident in Matty uh, at center and, and uh, Brewer at right tackle. And also Pagan is pretty much set up at left guard. But the right guard and the left tackle positions and left tackle being a major one. Or stuff that's going to have to be, uh, you know, figured out pretty quick. Okay, take me through this week uh, for in in, uh, in IU football to make quickly. it really really Go. fast. Uh, Wednesday, freshman and transfers report. Thursday, tomorrow. yeah, tomorrow or Thursday, everybody else reports. Uh, we'll have some availability that day. Friday is the first day of camp. That's still an acclimation period. I can't remember how many days that is, but they will not. They can't practice in pads. Right. Uh, basically. They just run around. They just you know run around and get conditioned and all that sort of thing. I'm not sure how many days that lasts, but they also practice Saturday, and we have availability then. They practice Sunday. We don't have availability then. 
Uh, but, you know, then once the acclimation period gets finished up, then they start hitting each other. We really get going. Mm -hmm. Can't wait. Thank Me you either. for being here. Mm -hmm. We'll see you later. Thanks, Stu. You can ex exhale now.